What is laissez-faire capitalism? And how did it contribute to the Gilded Age in the United States? Well, in order to answer these two questions, we need to start with this guy here, Adam Smith. You may know Adam Smith from a study of the Enlightenment. Adam Smith was a Scottish philosopher who talked about economics. He's kind of the father of modern economics when he wrote his book, The Wealth of Nations, in 1776, which was highly influential here in the United States. Now, we don't have the time to go through everything that Adam Smith said, but we're going to look at four major points. Number one, his belief in a free market system. His belief that self-interest was actually a good thing. His laissez-faire attitude towards the role of government with the economy and letting it be and letting it do whatever it wants to do. And of course, the invisible hand. So really quickly, let's break these four things down. The free market system, according to Adam Smith, is that business should be able to buy, trade, sell, just be free to do anything that it wants to do. Uh, that business should operate without any type of government regulation or government control. And that if there was a problem, supply and demand would guide the market. Uh, the market did not need regulation by a government body. The market would regulate itself. Adam Smith also said that self-interest is good, that if everyone acts in their own self-interest, that it actually benefits everybody else. So greed is good. He expresses this in the quote, it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we can expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own self-interest. That means I don't get a delicious steak because of anything other than the fact that the butcher wants to make money. The butcher is selling me that steak because he has a desire to make a profit. He got up early, he sharpened his knives, he butchered the cow so that he could benefit, not me. He's not interested in my delicious steak dinner. Now I get a delicious steak dinner because the butcher's interested in his own self-interest. The butcher wants money. Now, in terms of laissez-faire or let it be, Adam Smith said, we don't need the government to get involved with this, that we want no government regulation, that government regulation would only interfere with economic growth, and that the more the government stayed out of the economy, the better things would be. We don't need the government to regulate things because we have the invisible hand. Yes, Adam Smith said there would be an invisible hand that would be operating in the market and in the economy in order to address and to fix the problems. For example, if the butcher ran a very dirty butcher shop and the meat was not of high quality, then people would stop going to the butcher shop. People would go across the street to the other butcher shop. So because of competition between butcher A and butcher B, butcher A has to make sure that his meats are high quality, that his store is clean, and that he operates a good and productive business because self-interest and public interest are connected. If the butchers are in competition with each other, I'm going to benefit from that because I'm going to get good quality meat at a good price. So Adam Smith says there's no reason to regulate because the invisible hand will do it for us. Now, without government regulation, factories and businesses can have unsafe working conditions because there are no laws regulating them. They can also pay low wages to their employees to work them as many hours as possible, to hire children, to produce unsafe and unhealthy products, or to actually make false claims in their advertising about those products. Without regulation, businesses are going to do all the wrong things, unfortunately. But by doing all these wrong things, they are going to reap the rewards and accumulate massive, massive, massive profits. And because they're making so much money, they're not really incentivized to make very many changes. Change is going to come very slow because the money keeps piling up. The government's also going to act very non-laissez-faire in certain ways. While they may not be regulating businesses, they are taking some actions to help businesses. Number one, the government's going to keep taxes relatively low. This is going to allow businesses to reinvest the money that they're saving in taxes and grow their business larger. So low taxes definitely benefited large business owners. And the government also established high tariff. A tariff is a tax on an imported good. 
So as American business was growing and developing, they were afraid of competition from European business and European goods. These high tariffs were designed to keep foreign competition out of the United States, forcing Americans to buy only American-made products, probably at higher prices than they could have gotten from European products. These high tariffs are going to be in place for a while until American business feels it's strong enough in order to compete on a global market. Now, the invisible hand is supposed to fix all of these things, but unfortunately, the invisible hand takes a long time to fix things. So we are going to need to see some action taken by private citizens and then the government to address issues like child labor, low wages, and poor and unsafe conditions. All those things will be coming up in our look at the progressive era as a reaction to the Gilded Age. So to do a quick recap, Adam Smith said, we need a free market system where business is free to do what they want to do. Self-interest is good and actually benefits everyone. The government's role in all of this should be to let it be and let it go. Laissez-faire attitude will help business grow and develop. And if there are problems, the invisible hand will fix it. So that's how Adam Smith influenced American business and government during the Gilded Age. We're going to continue to dive into these ideas and topics as we go further in our unit of study.